Hi folks, uh, welcome Matt. Today's a double upload day. There will be another video later today, so be, uh, be sure to check that out. But this is the first one of the day. I've never done a video like this before in two and a half years on this channel. So sit back and enjoy the conversation. Let's, let's go. folks hello welcome back to road trip and welcome back to dresden now things have things have happened with dresden and i feel like this is the best time ever to do this sort of video to talk you through my thoughts on the current state of me as a manager dresden as a team and what the future might hold uh, so let's go through a few things that that need to be addressed so first of all to clear things up since we last met in our three woman against Kazaru, uh Kazaru, he i changed it um griff earth beat us one nil uh heidenhelm beat us uh, we beat them sorry three nil and we drew against berlin it's okay you know we, we've gone top of the table we've got the same record the identical record as castle with a slightly better goal difference yannick hein is banging them in uh, interestingly on yannick hein by the way he's reached his potential ability apparently his current ability is four star he's reached his potential and he's a good example of players that are just about hitting what I expect them to hit. It has this team, like at the top of the second division, hit its absolute peak. For some players, yes. For others, no. And that is the problem with what's happened right now. I go through this squad. I look at Friedrich in goal. I think, do you know what? There's more in him. He's going to improve. Fatih Dink it right back. Honestly, I could go through so many of these players and just think there's a little bit more to get from some of these. Pissa Moglu, a player that I massively enjoy. And I, I want to stay... For, there's certain players that are just keeping me at Dresden. You can hear me say the word keeping here. And you can realise that that's because we've had some job offers. Some job offers that, frankly... I can't ignore. They're not the sort of job offers where it's a similar level team or slightly step down with maybe a little bit more potential. They're offers I can't ignore. Um, Hepner is another one. I'm just, I, I've, this is basically my situation for the last 12 hours is just going through and looking at players that I really like using and players that are going to, are going to continue to grow and Altenburg. I don't want to just leave. I want to see what he does. Of course, if I go somewhere else, I can bring him with me. And that's always a possibility. But it's just players like guessing that we brought in on the cheap from the Ivory Coast. It's going to continue to develop, continue to be a superstar and could be one of the best centre-backs, not in world football, maybe, but in Germany, especially. And it'll be sad to see him go again. He could be a player we could bring with us. But you've got to understand, I can't bring every player from Dresden to the team I might be going to. Well, could I? I don't even know. I could do. So I've had three job offers. Let's run through those job offers. I've rejected two and I've interviewed for one. And we'll see how that interview went. Okay, so Bournemouth was the first one we went for. Now, of course, with, with Dresden, they're the first team that I feel a connection to do you know the first team you've seen from the videos probably the first team i feel like do you know what i love this this is great there's so, so much fun and potential within the team that it makes the videos that more exciting i don't know what's gonna happen next to kind of it's, it's that sort of, sort of attitude and when bournemouth come along you realize that they're in england ben they're a premier league side it's a huge step up right they're a premier league side they're 19th in the premier league but it's a huge step up there was a bit of backlash going to england the first time with morkham who i should say is struggling quite quite badly now um and while they're in the Premier League and they're Bournemouth, they don't jump off the pages, this is the team I want to be at. Like, you go through some of the players in this Bournemouth side, Berahino starts for them, they've got Envia, Adam Chure, Charlie Taylor, Jeffrey Bruma, Jack Wilshire, Tom Ince, Benica Phobie. So they've still got, like, a decent core there, Victor Fisher. They've got some good players there. They've got a few youngsters coming through as well. And, I mean, if you look at the value of the team, you can see they are far and away like high value like that our, our highest value player would be around here we're on the tom Ince mark i mean i'll show you for for reference here our highest value player is two million it's bart who doesn't even start for us right now he had it kind of just behind normal point eight of course these these values would go up if we were to gain promotion but you can see just from the value of the players that is a huge step up in club and in what we can achieve and you think about the premier league money but bournemouth of course not not safe right now i've got a survival job of course they know that I'm, I'm quite good at that so teams down there are likely to want me to join and that brings me to the second offer so swansea got in contact they still haven't hired a new manager chris Llewellyn is their assistant still in charge and swansea came to me and said do you want to interview for the, for the manager's job and i i thought about it long and hard i looked at their team looked at the squad thought is there potential here and I, i'll be honest folks i saw a little bit more in this side than i did maybe the bournemouth side there's a little bit more quality across the board 
in this Swansea team. And it made me wonder, do you know what? It's not England. Technically, it's Wales. So I could get away with it in that regard. They've got some really high-value player once, uh, players once again. Slightly stronger team. Slightly younger team as well. So there's a little bit more to grow into in terms of that. And, and it gives me room to bring players in and, and develop players at the same time. And there's only one or two older players that eventually we can move on, of course, and replace with hot prospects, with wonder kids, with Premier League money as well. That's far easier to do. But then you get and you see they're in 17th. And how long would it take to realistically get them to a level where another club bigger than Swansea would want to come to me. And in terms of facilities and ground, ground size, is it that much of a bigger step from Dresden even? Of course, in stature in world football it is, but in terms of everything else, how much of a rise is it compared to Dresden? And in my opinion, it wasn't necessarily big enough, so we didn't interview for it. And I think it's important to note that pre-season with Dresden, we weren't predicted necessarily to go up. We were predicted 7th place, 50-1. to one, that Some big sides came down. Hanover came down. Bosham came down. You've got Nuremberg, who are a solid side in this division. Sabres single stack. Kausel Slater, of course, ahead of us too. And we were never expected to, to, to challenge. We were expected to maybe go for third. I think you had me say at the start of the series, or the start of the season. That's what I'm expecting. To, to sort of pinch that third place, maybe get into a playoff with the side uh, in the lower reaches of the Bundesliga. And that could be our route into into the into the Bundesliga. The, the issue is now, though, we're top of the league, and I can't get over the fact that this team that I've built, and mainly is the a team I've built. They're not a team that I've adopted. This is the team I've built. I spent money on a lot of these players. Is top of the league. They're playing the football I like, and they're top of the league. But I got another offer, and that offer came from Germany, and came from Stuttgart. Now. I've applied for the job at Stuttgart. I've ex I've received a three-year job offer from Stuttgart. And I guess we'll look at Stuttgart. So with a team like this, you can see straight away the difference in calibre of team. In fact, if I just go back to the screen here and you look at the club info, you can see they have a 60,000-seater stadium, um, the Mercedes-Benz Arena. They have four-and-a-half-star training facilities, four-and-a-half-star youth facilities, a, a half-a-star more reputation. The, the finances are secure, so they're not in debt or anything like that. They're offering me £10,000 more a week. In fact, I'll probably have that to 15 just to see what, just to see what I could do. Um, and there's no there's no board requests. I've got to sign high-profile players and develop players using the, using the club's youth system. I get a transfer budget of £17.5 And all I have to do is avoid relegation in my first year. The reason for that is Stuttgart currently sitting 14th in the Bundesliga. But in terms of size of clubs in Germany, let's just give you an idea of that then. You can see straight away, they're the, they're the fifth biggest stadium in the Bundesliga, which, which to me gives them the potential to be one of like the fifth or the top six biggest clubs in the whole division. Like the, the only teams bigger than them, Hertha Berlin, Gelsenkirchen, Bayern Munich and Dortmund. So we've got every chance of, of battling those. We've got the stadium to compete. And then you look at their squads and it all of a sudden becomes a very difficult decision. So you go over to their squad, and um, I mean, I'll sort it by value so we can see see a few of these. I'll talk about the youth of the of the team at Swansea and how that was quite attractive, really. If you go through the ages of this team, I mean, they've only got, what is it, seven players over the age of 25. They've got a hell of a lot of youngsters coming through, some of which are quite good. And you look at some of the players then, you've got Almendinger, which just sounds fantastic, uh, out on that left wing, can play on the right wing as well. Very, very fast, 90 determination, great teamwork, vision, can improve crossing and dribbling, he's only 23, still a little bit of time to do that. Worth nearly £17 million, by the way. Uh, Burke Ozcan, another player in the centre, can play as an attacking midfielder, can play sort of anywhere in the midfield, really. Does a, does a fine job, looks well-rounded again, £16.5 million, and I'm going to be honest, is the sort of player in a January, which is coming up, we're in Boxing Day, I would maybe try and move on, cash in, spend elsewhere. Frank Hoffman looks like a really exciting young German player. 17 finishing, really good physicals as well. Good acceleration, strength, balance, determination of 19, 15 technique. Uh, decent work rate, which can obviously improve. And, and there's so many like players like this. Tom Bremer, another one, left-sided midfielder. He's got all the attributes you want in a 20-year-old German, worth 16 million. And all I can find myself doing is just flick through these players and think, are they an upgrade on what we have at Dresden? And the answer you come back to every single time you flick through these players is yes, of course they are. But then, do I want to continue the journey at Dresden? I should say now there's no option to stay at Dresden until the end of the season and take the Stuttgart job. I actually think that'd be too much of a gamble because Stuttgart could go down, we could go up, it wouldn't be worth it. So this is the time now where I have to make the decision. that It's, it's a club valued at a lot more money, frankly, than we are. 
it's a club with a lot of exciting prospects. It's a club that are much bigger than Dresden, if we're just being completely honest. And it's a club that I think could take us to the next level. Now, there are pros and cons. The cons being, in my opinion, that if we move to Stuttgart and it doesn't work out, we'll have to build back up again. Is this a bit of a... Is this a jump too soon? You know, I'm top of the league in the second division. Is this a jump too soon? Will it take me to the next level quick enough? Do the other players good enough to take me to that next level? Is there enough money to take me to that next level? And is it a bit of a stopgap? I don't want to be here for four years and no job offers are coming in. You know, I'm coming sort of... 8th, ninth, 7th in the Bundesliga and never really progressing beyond that. Maybe not even quite pushing for Europe. And that is the problem. The Bundesliga, for all of the, like we say, oh, English, England's a very competitive league. So is the Bundesliga. You look at the league table as it is now, Bayern top on 38 points. The team in 7th on 30 points. There's an 8-point gap between that. Like, it's a very closely congested league. Bayern Munich are not the same force as they are currently in world football. Neither are Dortmund. There isn't this runaway train effect in, in the Bundesliga anymore. You look at it, past winners, you go, Bayern win it every year but you can see here that it's getting closer and closer with the more Bayern's bigger names leave Matt Summers for example he's got the highest average rating in the league but he's 35 now he's not going to be around forever and there's, there's going to be a change soon at Bayern Munich and do I want to be the person to activate that change so it's a tough choice it's do we stay at Justin get promoted and push for something special and create something here or do we move up the German ladder? I, I talked about it in England. I said, look, we're at Morecambe. If you get a championship job offer, that might be part of my three-year stint in, in England. And it never happened. We never got a job offer that made sense. I think we were offered like a relegation candidate in the championship and it wasn't something that I considered to be a huge upgrade. This, though, seems like a big upgrade. But there's so much sentimental value in Dresden and there's so much great about Dresden. We're like the plucky underdogs and I feel like the manager of the plucky underdogs. And of course in the Bundesliga with Stuttgart you can have that same feel. But it's a tough choice, isn't it? So, what would you do? What is the right thing to do? And there, oh, there's so many good things, but there's so many things keeping me at Dresden. I want to know in the comments section what you do I, I, I'm very interested to see what you do what you think the best choice is I think there are definitely that there's not going to be everyone thinks this is the right thing to do so which is funny in a, in a series really I'm not going to do a poll we've we've had that we've made that mistake before but I am genuinely interested to see what you what you think um that said by the time the next episode comes out I will have obviously already made the decision and you're gonna have to wait until the episode this evening to find out what that decision is do we walk away or do we finalise the deal? I guess we'll find out next episode. If you've enjoyed this episode with a nice big cliffhanger, then um, I'll see you soon. We're love with care. We'd like to mention until next time, Stuttgart, Dresden.